Pinar when I think of now, how am I going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> and having Pinar there just was transforming. I mean, part of aging is less capacity for um, picking up the clay and rolling it out and so, uh, and certainly putting it up on a high shelf. You know. My husband has forbidden me from climbing ladders in my studio. <laughs> she doesn't always listen. <laughs> I try to keep her like, Cory, what are you doing? But nowadays I listen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> right. So it's just been wonderful for me, a wonderful partnership. And wonderful for me. And it, it seems like we both learn from each other and share with each other. But I'm telling you, what seemed like a really big apartment, not an apartment, a <laughs> uh, studio, to me, while getting ready for this show, became nearly impossible. <laughs> we both nearly lost our minds. And we had to take turns coming in. <laughs> and I would say, okay, I need a day to be in the studio without anybody else coming in. And, you know, it was a, a tough time. A lot of hard things happened with our pieces. So, yeah, I didn't know what that entailed, honestly. Um, um, you know, our studio is not small. It's a pretty good sized studio, but and normally it hasn't been an issue, but like, I didn't know, I never showed uh, any like the size of body of work anywhere before so this is my first time so I didn't know what that entailed and uh, of course like Corinne is amazing and she just makes these has these wonderful ideas but of course they're like big projects so like we both had so many big things that we wanted to realize and and, and it was becoming uh, it, it needed more than it, you know we thought it was and, and we, but we we, were, we we made, Dude, like, we made it. We made it through. We survived. And Here we are. <laughs> there were many disasters along the way. We survived. Uh, killed explosions. <laughs> we survived. I don't know. How all many kinds explosions of... did we have in the kiln? Um, a few. <laughs> How did we have uh, the kiln? Yeah, things we didn't want to realize. So, uh, truth be told, it was it was a big, big, tough journey. But I am so thrilled that we did this. Thank you so much for everything. You know I love you. You have changed my life and thank you for that. I don't know what would where would I have been if this clay, if you were in my life, I don't know where. I would have lost my mind. So so grateful that I you know it saved me, you saved me. You guys saved me. Thank you so much for all your love and interest and last Friday the opening night was so amazing. I was just over cloud nine. Wasn't it? Was it really wonderful? So many it was people a came. culmination of so much um, what I'd like to call interbeing. You know, all of the people that are in our lives and how much they contribute in ways that we don't realize. And um, I, I, I'm, I don't know, or is it too soon to tell the story of the piece? No, go for it, go for it. <laughs> this is very casual, we're amongst friends. Um, well, we decided that the theme, our, that our show would be called Truth Be Told. And I was consumed with the fact that I'm aging and things are changing and what I can do is changing. And um, I really, really want to be present as I age. You know, very early on in my life, I had the blessing of a wonderful family and a beautiful farm that I grew up on. But there was also a side of it that was 
the way Christianity was explained to me, and um, and also some abuse that caused some real um, problems with my being able to feel at home with myself. I was constantly trying to figure out how to be a Christian with the things that that seemed to involve. And I certainly couldn't talk about the abuse and work with that. So I really felt there's a side of me that always felt uh, unworthy and um, that I needed to work hard to please other people and not cause trouble. <laughs> and um, so I would say my whole life was different efforts to deal with those things. And that Clay literally saved my life. I mean, all the people that represented uh, people who weren't caught up the way I was with those things. I felt how good it was to be with people like that. And I felt like I could be my whole self when I was with those people. So when my mother was upset that I wasn't going to church and quoted the verse about not um, neglecting the 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 brethren. <laughs> this is kind of a tell, telling thing. <laughs> um, and I said, no, I don't neglect it. I have wonderful friends that are my church. They're people with whom I can be my whole self. And I can ask my questions and share back and forth with them. And then when I um, had to come up with what I wanted to do for the show, I didn't want to do what I'd done before. I wanted to do something that, in which I didn't think about how can I do this right, you know, is this okay? Which would somewhere along the line enter with any piece that I made. I thought of this dream that I had a couple of years ago in which I was in the basement of the Little Street Art Center, <clears throat> but not their basement. It was filled with soft, unwrapped clay. And I'm standing there looking at it and thinking, oh, I'd just like to put my whole self into that. <laughs> Of course, having a strong ego, it never entered my mind that that might be getting naked. <laughs> but when um, Amanda heard me tell the story of that dream, she said, oh, I'd like to help get the clay ready for that. And then later I talked to her, wanting to talk to her about it, and she said, you, you, know, you mean when you're going to get uh, naked in the clay? I said, no. <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> she said, that's what you said. <laughs> and when that happened with a couple other people, I thought, uh, I've worked with dreams a lot. I've, I've done therapy with people working with dreams. and So I remembered the fact that we preferred often to um, interpret our dreams according to our egos, mm -hmm. what the ego can accept. And I thought, okay, maybe I'm being called to do something more. Maybe she's right. And I thought then about all the times through my life that I have felt as a woman, like, un, that I didn't belong and not having, uh, just not free, 
you know, it took me really being with people who have a strong sense of themselves as women or who were questioning like I was. It took that for me to feel at home with people. And um, I have collected the most wonderful group of friends <laughs> through the years. And when it, uh, planning this project meant a whole lot of work. Amanda can tell you how, what it was like to put out 750 pounds of clay on a four by six bed. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without this one. <laughs> I said I couldn't have done it without yeah. that one. And then go again. <laughs> so, uh, She's so the, always there. Always <laughs> offering to help. So the two of them did that. Well, and then there was the matter of it really wouldn't be possible to do it in the studio. So I'm like, where can I do this? Someone mentioned our friend Kathy Schwalbe, and because she has a studio in her basement, and what I didn't know was that she was developing a uh, residency there for people, and she had someone in residence when I asked her, and then in December when I, um, in December when I uh, was doing this project, um, suddenly a lot of what I was saying. <laughs> this is aging. It became, it became available. <laughs> space. Right. It's, yes. it's, it's the basement was available, <laughs> and um, Panar and, and Amanda came there and, um, and other people <laughs> takes the village <laughs> along the way lots and lots of people so um, we planned on having uh, photo I mean people offered things or suggested things I don't think anything that I did wasn't out, came out of one of the interbeing women that I was with. <laughs> so <clears throat> then I had to practice to do this because the idea of it was really to be a kind of ritual to shed my shame and various things that aren't true about us. You know, our basic selves are beautiful and full of love and <clears throat> uh, truth. So uh, I would practice, like I would think, who, who do I think I am that I'm going to do this? And then I would think, why would I question it? If this is true that I'm a worthy person. So it ended up that when it actually happened on this particular day, and these Pinar and Amanda and other women were gathered around uh, the photographer and the vide videographer. Jenny Sykes. Jenny Sykes. <coughs> and um, what was the photographer's name? Martha Sassi. Yeah. yeah. That I just felt so surrounded by love. And when I went up and um, you took off my uh, kimono. cover. <laughs> she had a kimono. She's very stylish. <laughs> <laughs> I went up there and started engaging with the clay. And I did that for about an hour before uh, taking a break and I realized that I had not felt any shame mm -hmm. throughout that whole time. It was like a miracle mm -hmm. that that could happen. Mm -hmm. And since then, you know, when the 
old doubts come up, I recall that experience. Mm -hmm. And I just want this for us all as women, that we celebrate ourselves and that we celebrate ourselves as we age and that we love our bodies. So I, th I think it's time for a break. <laughs> <laughs> and then I want to talk about how it came to completion. Uh, I want to say something. <laughs> hey, um, that day was just magical. Uh, I mean, we were there and we were watching Corinne to do what she was doing. And it was, I cannot tell you how beautiful it was. It was like, you know, she was revolutionary because, you know, one of the things that we do as artists, I guess, we do, we do what we do for ourselves, but also what we do for ourselves helps others. And she broke so many, like, rules, you know, beauty standards that people perceive and stuff. It was just such a beautiful, you know, performance in itself. And you can see that from the photos and there's a video and um, there will be another um, panel and I think you're going to show the ver longer version of the film. I'm sure. the you're show showing now today? Yeah. Okay, you're going to see the longer version today, which is beautiful. So uh, it was just magical. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Can we, can um, we watch the video now? I just wanted to, I wanted to see if you could just speak briefly about the candlestick, the candlestick holder of, yeah. of your mother's and how you had that, you brought your mother into this and right. to like bear witness of this event. Right, right. I, I brought that candlestick of my mother's that she had made before I, I, maybe when I was a baby, but before I knew her <laughs> in the way that I knew what she was doing. So, um, all the ancestors were there. All the all the ancestors were there. All the ancestors were there. So I want to um, show you the video that. Um, Jenny Sykes has put together so who can help start it. Let me move it. But then it's probably it's best viewing. Pardon? It's such a small screen that I'm not sure we can all view it at once. How do you want to do it? Well, <clears throat> we've got it on the laptop right behind you guys. We could leave it for later. later. Watching after it's already yeah. closed. Yeah. Probably yeah. better. So. <clears throat> Is it available on the gallery website? Or? No, we just have viewing today and next weekend, and okay. then for the closing reception. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's recording. Well, then. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not public. No, there is a way to probably set it up that it's not public if you want, don't want to be public by using yeah. the code and setting it up and just sending out the code mm -hmm. and then you can do it on your own and everyone on your own computer at some point. Mm -hmm. Not sure how to do that. Oh, okay. <coughs> we also have a problem with the, the woman that shot has rights to it. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we may not be able to put it on the Well, uh, I'm not saying that I'm going to publish it. I know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll consider that later. Yeah. But anyhow, it's an idea. When, when you were describing the scene of um, when you did that, did you have, did you attend to the temperature? Was there music in the room? Yeah. What was the atmosphere that you yeah. saw? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was warm. It was cold. Yeah. It was cold. <laughs> We had like a bunch of heaters. Well, I mean, because it was so chilly, we did have we did have space heaters. We yeah. had like yeah. four space heaters, yeah. and um, it was we tried to make it as warm as possible, but the clay was cold, and she was saying, "Oh my God, I'm cold!" But then, <laughs> then she got used to it. But yeah, it was it, it got um, like when you watch the video, you see me when I'm lying down on my back, and I 
arched my back so that it wouldn't all go down. <laughs> <laughs> the clay, you know, very quickly, it's just sort of like getting in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Did you do it in complete silence? Pardon? Was it in complete silence? Yeah, there was, silence. Yeah, there was music, there was which music. it was the same music that is on the video. So, oh, why don't you read the poem? I think that's okay. the poem that she started the ritual with the poem and well, at, uh, at the table. At the oh, table, table. that's later, yeah. But, uh, yes. When you, when you took a break, yeah. Uh, afterwards, we had a celebratory uh, lunch of soup, whatever else. Uh, and this is a poem that has been really, really significant for me through the years. It was first given to me during a therapy session. I can't tell you how long ago. And it's by, uh, from the Kabir book, and if you know the, um, it's from the 19th century, Kabir. And this is an example of, of his writing. Inside this clay jug, there are canyons and pine mountains, and the maker of canyons and pine mountains. All seven oceans are inside, and hundreds of millions of stars. The acid that tests gold is there, and the one who judges jewels. And the music from the strings no one touches, and the source of all water. If you want the truth, I will tell you the truth. Friend, listen. The God whom I love is inside. And when I think of the interbeing, it's like it's inside us all. That energy flows between us. And, um, and keep it. photos were taken by Cindy Trim. She's here with us today. Right. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you for taking beautiful photos of Corinne's work. It's my um, honor. And um, so let me talk about a little bit about my work, I guess. Um, if you look around, you will see that my work has, there's a I, I realized that there were like multiple people living inside of me, I guess, because, you know, <laughs> there's a lot going on, but I think this is like years and years of holding back. Now it's time to pour it out. <laughs> and it's, I'm just letting everything, um, let my fingers do what they want to do. So, um, and I also believe that, you know, there's some sort of, Astroplane, I guess, that we pull from, we all pull from. I guess we're staying open to it. The ideas come from there and they just like knock on, on our shoulders. And the artist is the person who is open, I guess, who's listening more than others because there's always so much going on in our lives. It's like we're busy, we're running around, but um, we have to stop and listen and really it pays off. And a lot of the times I think I'm doing one thing and I'm doing something else because <laughs> there's no um, telling clay what to do. They, you know, the clay tells me what to do. And I try to honor that. I just try to stay open and receptive to it. Um, and I do what I do because I have to. I feel the necessity. Uh, it's, it's almost like makes me feel most alive and gives me a lot of joy and, and that's what I decided to do moving forward. So it was a decision that I made, 
really, and nothing else. Because before that, I think I had the capacity, but I don't think I have ever listened or let myself do it. But you open that door and I'm walking through it and I'm loving it and I don't want this to stop. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, thanks for everything. I, and it's interesting. I come in the door to the studio and I see these things developing and I, I think very wisely, uh, she doesn't say much about what she's making. And I don't I'm like, know. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks that I know, I have a name for it, I go, how can you no. <laughs> She you asked me that, she's like, what, are, what color is it gonna be? What, like, what are you making, like, what is the name of it? I'm like, I don't well, know. Well, Korean. At some point it comes. Yeah, at some point. <laughs> it's the very tail end. Okay. I worked till the very end. I was still figuring out. Uh, but I, I must say, I, I love how she develops pieces, and I love just how she stands at the table and looks at what's in front of her, and you know she'll put something somewhere and then she'll move it, and then she will do as much as she knows to do on a piece, and it'll, next time I come in, it'll be on a shelf. <laughs> and there's pieces that get fired, but they're they're obviously pieces of something. So I have no idea. But she doesn't either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's been really exciting to to be with her because she's so much freer that way and uh, quick to access uh, and takes the time to let things bubble up. I really love that. The boy, they bubble up. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of emotions bubbled up, yeah. I have been, like, I'm trying to kind of understand what I'm feeling, really. You know, what I'm feeling, what's going on in my head, what does it mean to be a woman in this society today, in the world, you know, all these things, like the social justice, what about the land we live on? What about the earth? Like, where are we going? What can we do? You know, all these things. I have a daughter, so I feel like I have, I, it's my obligation to try to leave her a better place. Um, so we need the artists to do that, to change people's minds, uh, keep making, whatever it is. I don't, we need it all. We need everybody's work. And contribution. This is my contribution. It's very humble. It's the first time I'm seeing it up on the wall myself, and it's crazy. I'm like, what? Is this me? And you know, I uh, this is a this was a huge learning experience. I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen next. Uh, that I have learned a lot. I have learned so much. Like technical problems were solved, and you know, I made. So many good connections. <clears throat> the people at Will Street have been delightful. I was crying so many times. They gave me a shoulder to cry <laughs> on. We were like, <clears throat> Dallas is one of them. <laughs> There's so a problem. And then I go, like, Dallas, you know, that broke. You know, again, you know, like, what am I going to do? And she's like, you got this. Keep going. You know, <clears throat> I have such great people around me, and they, you know, cheered me out in moment. I was like, really didn't know what was gonna happen. I thought I was gonna have nothing to show, but it all came together and I'm blown away. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Best day of my life. Thank you so much for coming and being part of it. Uh, I wanted to say something about that period of time too from <clears throat> from these pieces being made. There were a whole bunch of people people at different times that came in and carved out the back side of these pieces because they're really fit and obviously they're gonna break if you put them in the kiln. Also I knew that you know in the making of it, you know, I'm pushing my arm, I'm pushing clay with my feet, and I knew I was trapping air. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was probably not going to be able to get rid of all those 
air holes. So I'm just trying to do as much as I can after other people do it. I'll spend another hour on the back of something and that took a long time. Finally, and Amanda kept telling me to wait, you know, let the clay fully dry. <laughs> Love of the clay. So I don't know exactly what my mistakes were. Uh, might have been the trapped air, might have been a bit of moisture somewhere here and there, but when I fired it the first time, five of the pieces were, um, had blown up. And I was just beside myself for a little while. <laughs> and then I thought, you know, this piece is about aging. And I was actually having things happen, you know, at, at that time. And it sort of felt like the pieces were um, reflecting me. And the reason I called it body body is that it was you know, the human body together with the body of clay. And I often think of working with it as uh, having a conversation. So the conversation continued all spring. <laughs> um, and I decided that the parts that cracked, the, I needed, they really needed extra special care. If I was gonna love my aging body, I needed to love the part that had just broken and see what I could do to help that part of me. So when I, as I sat there and looked at these pieces, I came to just really love these specific pieces that had broken and I decided to use color on those uh, as though there was, you know, that color within the piece that wasn't really seen unless it broke open. So it, it was a very rich experience putting it together like that. <clears throat> and then another friend who has had many experiences of things blowing up. Susan Wolf. <laughs> Susan offered all the way to, oh, you know, we can put that together. We can, she just said, fire it with the pieces broken uh, into the high fire. And, uh, and I'll glue it together after. Mm -hmm. And she was amazing. She could figure out how they fit together in ways I can't. And there, there was actually another one that was knocked off the top of the... It <laughs> actually fell on her head. I wasn't there. Um, it was late at night. <laughs> so I couldn't figure out how to put that one together, but, but she did. So that's kind of the story of, of, of that. The firings were awful too. I, mean, I just gave a beast of I wasn't my whole self, you know. <laughs> like past firings, I, I don't know what was going on. But the reason that there's all those different colors of the clay itself is because the kiln was had different atmosphere in different parts of it. So there's parts that <coughs> that were um, oxidized and parts that were um, less oxidized. What do you call it? Reduced. 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 Right. That's where it gets dark. If you have any iron that's in it, it'll darken. So there's all different colors, and <laughs> that sort of I came to love that also. And in a sense, I think my, my entire career as an artist, I've had a lot of different blow ups and mistakes and so on. And I've come to see many, many of them as not mistakes. Mm -hmm. you know, the beautiful oops. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Things that you would never do happen. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for that. It, it, and, it, and it helps with yeah. how you think about life itself. You know, <clears throat> like I'll start yeah. ruminating on all the mistakes I've made about not doing the right thing at the right time, exercise or whatever. You know, it was how it was. I did what I did. And here I am. <coughs> and that's not a mistake. Uh, oh, yeah, question? Yeah. Karen, you used to work with your hands, as am I. Doing this piece, which part of your body surprised you to be working with it? <coughs> surprised me? Yeah, surprised you and, and, and pleased you. And fun um, well, I think um, I was most surprised by working with my feet. Mm. It just was really fun, and I the, the clay the clay wasn't as soft as I'd hoped it would be, so I knew I was going to have to work harder. So very soon I'm digging my heel in to get it down far enough so I can really push the clay, and, and then it moves and it just looks so cool. And I do it again and again and again and create all those uh, air spots. <laughs> I remember she said um, that she felt like no shame at all, and she felt like a kid in a sandbox. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So she was a kid again. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question? Uh, would you like to speak at all to um, the trajectory of your piece and how it correlated to how your health was going <laughs> while you're making the piece? I know when we were working together and photographing it, it was um, kind of like a culmination point where you had been in a lot of pain. Right. And now your piece is here for all of us and you seem to be better. It's, it's on the upswing mm -hmm. now. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I really had a lot of pain and um, and it was shifting and different things hurting and going to doctors, lots of uh, spending time at doctors. And it was like the two things I was doing was dealing with my body and dealing with the clay body that I dealt with. So yeah, it, it really, I have to say, made, working on the piece really helped me be more present to my body as I was going through these things. It's her new workout now. That's what she does. <laughs> she has to play. And whole thing. New workout? Oh yeah. I, I, I tried everything I could think of. Whoever asked that question. I mean, I. And you hit my head back into it, and I <coughs> used my shoulder a bit, and my knees, and uh, pushed with my elbow. Yeah. <coughs> All of it was fun. Actually, the making of the piece is, you know, every it's about enjoying the process, and she did. And the the piece is just a byproduct. That's. That's what it is. I kept telling her that, and, and I heard it somewhere else, and that's, you know, what we make is just a byproduct. We're enjoying the process. Right? Right. So, so one thing I would just want to say is that when I started doing clay, it was because of a dream. And um, I, so I came to clay with no plan for anything I was going to make. Nothing. I had nothing in my head to, that I had in mind. I really just wanted, I, would, I went curious. I went with questions about why I dreamed it. And uh, I took many dreams into the clay work. Uh, many uh, of my sculptures were based on dreams. Uh, going up, uh, uh, moving from the classroom up to the 
studio was due to a dream. And I feel like, you know, when you have a, one of those dreams that you kind of feel like there's something there. And, and my Jungian analyst would always say, don't ignore any little snippet that you remember. Even if you remember one tiny little thing, work with it. And I discovered the most amazing things. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, but when I first worked with Clay, the first day I worked with Clay, I was on a class where we were throwing, and I threw a pot the first day, which nobody does. And it was shocking. The teacher was amazed. Of course, it didn't happen after that. <laughs> but I was so completely relaxed and present. And Clay became a way for me to be present mm -hmm. to myself and um, shift away from those habitual things I grew up with. Clay has truly been the thing that pulled me together and helped me grow as a person. <laughs> I guess, since I've, I've told all these stories, I might as well tell this one that is shocking. <laughs> this is my first year of making things with clay where I'm just kind of copying different people's styles and you know, playing with it. I thought, okay, now it's time for me to uh, make a vessel the way I heard another clay person describe it that the potter uh, thinks about the interior and the exterior reflects the interior. And I started thinking that way as I was making pieces. And I started getting really horny. <laughs> Previous people before us, you know, the land, everything. 
such a late start, I've got to get a lot of work done. Like, oh, why would you have to get more than you get? But um, I, didn't, I didn't take enough time to uh, stand back and see what was there. And I think I did much more of that after I came back from Sweden and enjoyed the process more because I didn't feel like it had to be done before it was done. Maybe to the ego that's tied in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm thinking of myself. Like, I, mean, I understand. Yeah. And I'm going right. to Norway. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Yeah. Um, and then the story to tell about <coughs> early on, some of the pieces that she made that she didn't like. Just threw them away in the trash. Right? And then one day she was at a resale shop. <laughs> and, and a couple of these pieces showed up at a resale shop. <laughs> and, and the woman said, Corinne asked her about where she got these pieces. And she said, Oh, well, there's this woman in Mexico for us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so from that time on, I've encouraged her to break anything she really <laughs> doesn't like. Yeah. Break it into pieces because it will show up, but you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> so Down naked 
on the clay. You know, like what were your practice sessions like? Or I'm just wondering about the practice. Well, I have, <clears throat> I have two thoughts that come to my mind. One is um, those four small pieces of mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The two lighter ones I made shortly after I had the dream about two and a half years ago. Okay. And, and there I was really wanting to practice to see what it would feel like to not planet. I mean, I have some soft clay here, and then I just, you know, what would it be like and just to follow my, my whims and any thought of what to do next just kind of relies about your response. Really like a conversation with the clay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I, I did do that with this piece. Uh, I was glad that um, Ginny wanted to come back and do some more video. And there were spaces that I hadn't engaged with my body at all. Mm -hmm. So I came back a couple of times to do that. <coughs> and then I felt like it was finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of know, right? Like when it's sort of yeah. done. Or you get tired. <laughs> <laughs> you get tired, it's done. Um, the one thing that I did when she was um, doing the performance, I uh, the back was not like really quite going into clay like all the way because it was a little cold and it couldn't really like you could, you couldn't get an imprint. So I asked permission if I could press some clay onto her back. And if you talk, we tried to blow on it to kind of heat it up a little bit, and then like to make it warmer. And then I put a little, you know, made a slab with my hands and then just pressed it onto her back. And then that blue piece over there is my response. It's hanging oh. on the left wall. So that's the imprint of her back. Because it was, the, what I was seeing was so beautiful. It was like the, the shape of her back and like her vulnerability, everything. You know, it moved me so much that I just said, you know, since this is our duo show, oh, like two person show, so may I do that? And she said, yeah, of course. And then I did that and then I decorated it. And you know, there was, so when, when it was drying, cause you know, it was being transported and stuff. So like, you know, another, like a crack came about, but then like, I, you know, like we were kind of honoring that. I decided like keep it and not repair it because I could repair it. It was like soft, but then I decided we said you know I said I would fill it up with glass and you know kind of accentuate the the crack and and you know that's that. So it was my response to her beautiful performance. Well <laughs> We're so proud of you. Sharon has a question. Um, Corinne, can you, I, I don't know whether this happens to you, but it feels like you definitely left your body on the clay. That body took, took some of your body. I'm wondering, is there anything after you shower, which you feel like you down too much, where did you get all this clay off of you? <laughs> oh, were there any parts of, of the clay that were, are embedded in you now? Oh, from the episode to the skin. Interesting. You must have inhaled a lot of She she also doesn't wash her hands, but she's gonna eat something. She keeps eating like with clay in her hands, so wow. she probably ate it too. So. <laughs> <laughs> she can't believe me. <laughs> no, we, yeah, it must have gone through the skin for sure. I guess I'm thinking more of like the metaphor or something that you yeah. like reflect the on now that's now very much part of the elements um, that's that you got from, <coughs> from the clay from that. <coughs> Thank you for that question. I was thinking about it. <laughs> Any other questions? Shall we wrap it up? You'll be here for a while. Thank you so much yeah. for coming. And we can have a great time with you.